a popular saying at sea was that naval officers were gentlemen trying to be sailors, merchant officers were sailors trying to be gentlemen, and the Royal Navy Volunteer Reserve were neither trying to be both. During the Great Depression, seamen who had jobs hung on to them, while master mariners signed on as able seamen, and others trudged around the shipping offices looking for work. Often conditions on board were poor and food inadequate. For the men on the tramp ships, conditions never really improved, yet as part of the merchant navy they would have become essential to move war material and troops and to support evacuations and invasions. Before the war, a foreign going ship carried a minimum of three mates, also known as chief, second and third officers, six or more engineers or four on a steamer, a deck department of eight under a boatswain, and another eight ratings in the engine room under somebody called a donkeyman. There was a similar size catering department. Uniform was only worn by officers on foreign going ships. Petty officers and ratings usually wore dungaree trousers and shirts with an old jacket in colder weather. There was also a variety of headgear from flat caps to handmade nautical caps. Ships leaving the United Kingdom signed on a crew at their departure port, with the exception of the master, the mate and the chief engineer and the apprentices. In merchant navy slang, the crew were known as the crowd, as in she had a Glasgow crowd. The ships of the better companies were manned by company men. Both ways the crew signed articles of agreement which called for them to serve for a period of two years or until they next returned to the United Kingdom. The articles were intended to set out working conditions known as the Board of Trade WAC and restricted their area of operation to between 72 degrees north and 60 degrees south. Coasters and ships that called at the UK frequently signed six monthly running agreements rather than signing off each time they reached the UK.